In order to apply that uh, limit comparison, we have to actually show this limits a number. So I'm not gonna go through all the details of why this equals one, but that one will equal one. Let's look at the other one. The other one's probably a little easier to see. It's just some polynomials. I'm going to write it. Oh, wow. Hold on. The other limit was negative one, not positive one. The reason this limit is negative one, the power terms, the powerful terms are those two. So it's basically two over negative two, which would be negative one. That is definitely significant. So that should be a negative one. Uh, the other limit is a little bit closer to what we're used to. I'm rewriting it, the order. I'm gonna write my case, negative k squared term first plus k to the one half over k squared. And it should be really obvious this is the coefficients of the squared terms. Uh, negative one over regular one, which is negative one. So we got our limit is negative one times negative one and that's positive one. If you get a negative limit for any of these, something went horribly wrong. You should never get negative. You could get zero, you can get infinity, you can get, does not exist, but you should never get negatives here. So those two, the ones you can write are both wrong? No, well, individually the limits were negative one, but this limit here on the left in the black is positive one. Oh, okay. If that guy was negative anything, something would have went wrong. Because we're taking, remember this is always gonna be, here we go, those are positive terms right here. So there's no way to have two positive terms getting us a negative. Depending on what happens, it could very easily be infinity or zero, but never negative. All right, so these behave the same. We got a, we compared to a convergent, Well, let's actually be a little careful about the BK, why that converges. Actually, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do with the BK, that's best used on the root or ratio test, which we haven't learned yet. So I'm just gonna say the uh, BK converges by the root test, or the ratio test, and then we'll see in the next section how to actually apply that. But we don't have a good test for this particular series. The problem was I made the problem up, I think to address something that you had asked. But to prove the BK converges, we don't have a good test for that yet. So if you're willing to believe that, then we can apply the limit comparison test by LCT, that summation of our AK converges. So let's jump into the root and ratio test. So root and ratio test, I'm gonna write the two tests out they are very similar, and then we're gonna go through four examples. So the next section should go pretty quick. Okay. That was it for the limit comparison test, yeah. So ratio test is my personal favorite, it is the most useful test. Let's get a festive pen out for this occasion. Oh, they took all my good colors. Yeah, I thought I did too. Oh, is that a different pen though, or is it that one? They stole the galaxy one. I don't see any of the good colors anymore. Oh no, I thought they were on like a different. All right, purple's pretty solid. Let's go that one, indigo. I haven't used that one yet. The mark. Oh, it's a highlighter. I don't think it. Uh, I don't know if they changed the size. Yeah. So all four of those on top of the same. They're just different colors. Maybe yeah. There's highlighters versus pencils. Gotcha. Or I guess there's probably I don't know felt pens. They're all. They're just different. They're colors. all the same. But some days they give me more colors and some days they take them away. That's the saddest thing. I know. <laughs> 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 all 
And that's how I was actually excited. <laughs> I know. I've been waiting for it. For it. All right, so here's our ratio. I'll underline it twice. There we go. Okay. That makes up for it. <laughs> Summation AK. Uh, we need is a series with. Now, on this test, you need the AK, all the AKs to be greater than zero. We're about to look at ratios, meaning we're going to divide by them. So we don't want them to equal zero. So definitely not zero. So they use the letter rho in the textbook, but you can just use a p. Rho is not measured. It pro I don't know. It means a lot of different things depending on what it science you're doing. It's, it's, it's a Greek letter. Yeah. It's, it's like what is x equal? Well, I mean, you know, in physics, yeah. I'm, 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 no, I'm telling you to watch this video now. This lecture. <laughs> All right, so this ratio looks a little bit like the limit comparison ratio. Obviously, it's just one series. We're not bringing in a second series. And then it depends on what rho is. Is that k subscript or is the a being multiplied by k? It's a subscript. Okay. Subscript, yeah. So it's basically it's the following term related to the term that came before. So the k plus 1 term versus the k term. So if rho is greater than 1, we get divergence. Rho equals 1, it's inconclusive. And rho is less than 1, it converges. That's all there is to the ratio test. Very simple. Ready for the root test? I'll stay with the cool indigo marker. I'm just going to underline it once. It's a good test, but not nearly as good as ratio. So we again have a series. And this time, AK can be 0, but not negative. So it's OK for some terms to be 0. This time, we're going to let rho equal lim k approaches infinity. We're going to look at the kth root of a k, which of course you could write as the one kth power. <clears throat> it will be really obvious when you need to use the root test because you're going to use it when the term is raised to something like the k power. And you use the root test, it will cancel out that k power basically. You could have used these on the quiz, yes, and it would have made the quiz much easier. Absolutely. Hopefully I picked the problems nicely so they weren't impossible without these tests. This probably would have trivialized the quiz, which is why I would give you different problems if you have these powerful tools. So this section is kind of the more, most useful out of them all? Yeah. This, of all the tests, this is, the integral test can be really good too. And this has the same row convergence and divergence. So if row is big, bigger than 1, diverge. Uh, if it equals 1, inconclusive. And greater, uh, less than 1, it converges. And so one comment about the inconclusive case. Generally, if one of these tests is going to be inconclusive, the other one will be inconclusive also. And what that means is you need to use another test. All right, so inconclusive means you get no information. So you use another test. So that's generally the test that we already looked at. Uh, integral test, limit comparison, or sometimes nth term test if you're lucky. That's usually very fast to apply. So ready to jump into some examples. So first one, 2 to the n plus 5 over 3 to the n. It kind of looks like it should be a root test. 
The only reason I'm gonna say don't go for root test is because this plus five at the end is not raised to the nth power. So if it was two plus five to the nth power, go for it. But that last one's not to the nth power. So we're gonna go ratio. Most of the series that you're looking at are fractions anyways. So you might as well just write the ratio <coughs> as a reciprocal, product of reciprocals instead of, use this form instead of AK plus one over AK. Just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal because that's gonna be your first step almost every time. So plug this uh, in here. I'm using K instead of N, it doesn't really matter what you use. I'll just swap everything out for Ks. So the important step is make sure you add one to K carefully. So that's the AK plus one term. So K appears twice, make sure you add one in both times it appears. Then the reciprocal The most useful way to algebraically proceed from here is put things that are similar in the same fraction. So I'm going to rearrange. So I see a base three in two separate fractions. So I'm going to move this base three to the other fraction. And then the base two I'll move to the first fraction. So I'm trying to pair up similar terms. So are there any algebra questions on these steps? When I say rearranging fractions, if I make the fractions look a little nicer, all I did was bring, let's see, this was CB times AD. So I basically just swapped the numerators, which multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter the order you multiply the numerators. So that's going to be a very common move you're going to do on this ratio test right there. All right, let's uh, simplify. What's the second factor simplified to? So how many extra threes are in the denominator? One. One, so it's one third. Or I could... So there we go, the 3K, 3K cancels, so we got one third. That's three to the K plus one. A lot of you don't look very happy. Is it, is it this step or another step that's not satisfactory? It's the plus one. So the 3K plus one is times 3K times three. Yeah, so that's, you're basically adding the, you know, the powers, you add the powers, you're multiplying bases. So I'm just breaking off one of the times threes. So then I can cancel the three to the k's. Um, how did you get the equation, like the like middle equation for the mm. ak plus one thousand? So <coughs> all I did was I went in and said, there's k, there's k. I'm just going to go plus one on each one. That's ak plus one. Okay. And then, well, I didn't decide. That's what the test told me I needed to do. That was the first thing I did right here. This was what I'm going for right here. I'm about to, once I reduce it, I'm about to take a limit next. Yeah. So this test, basically, it says, what's the ratio of the preceding term over the, like, of the following term divided by a term that came before? And if that ratio is less than one, meaning they're getting smaller, in this case, that getting smaller means it converges. If it equals one, it means that uh, when k is really big, they're very similar in size if the ratio is one. Like if you take two consecutive terms, divide it, and you get one, that means the terms are very similar in size. That's what I'm going to do with like, Right, so in that case, it doesn't tell you anything. They're similar in size. It's not enough to say 
convergent or divergent. If it's greater than one, they're actually growing, which is definitely divergent. The root test is a little harder for the intuition doesn't work out so well in the in the root test. You have to think a lot more. All right, so we're about to hit this simplified version with the limit. So let's clean up as much as we can. So I'm bringing the one third to the front. All right, so we did all pretty much all the algebra we can do, and we're going to apply limit now. K approaches infinity, one third times two to the K plus one plus five over two to the K plus five. So first thing, one third constant, bring that right out front. And I'm going to, I see there's a K plus one, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the threes. I'm gonna write this as two times two to the K plus five divided by two to the K plus five. What term does not matter so much when K is really big? Those plus fives are gonna be insignificant when K is getting bigger. So let's do the physicist method and just say forget about that and forget about that. Those fives aren't gonna make a difference. So if we forget those two, we basically have everything cancels out to two. The two to the k, two to the k cancels, so I'll do this in a couple steps. So you could also just cancel out two to the k plus five in each thing, right? Yeah, but <clears throat> I'm gonna be a little careful because the adding five is the least important thing, so I wanna take care of that first. And so now I have two times two to the k over two to the k. You could have just left this as two to the k plus one and then written that as two on the next, the next one. All right, so we got one third times two, which is two thirds. All right, two thirds, this is row, and row is less than one. So that's all we have to do to say convergent. So does that mean that it converges? Does it tell us what it converges to? No, none of these tests, not even the integral test tells you what it converges to. The integral test will give you an estimate and if you're careful, you can make your estimate pretty good, but there's really not a good way to determine what it converges to. Converges by the ratio test. Now, let's look back at the original series to get a little bit of intuition of why this probably would have converged without doing any work. So this ended up converging. Why does this get small quickly enough? It's the bottom term so basically, <clears throat> if I was doing a, a, a limit comparison, I would have compared it to two to the K over three to the K, which is two thirds to the K. And that's a convergent geometric series right there. So when you look at these, a lot of times it's good to use your intuition and say, this will probably converge, or this will probably diverge before you sit there and run a test on it. So spend 10 seconds or so, think about what's important when K is big, what's not important when K is big. So this would have been a really good limit comparison with the uh, series there at the bottom. That would have been a very reasonable way to do it as well. Question? So there's been, I don't know what the rule was, but I know there's a rule like the highest power is take that as the limit. Yeah, that's what I call the physicist method. So oh, it's the, yeah, okay. yeah so <clears throat> if we're dealing with polynomials, this is not a polynomial problem. If we had polynomials, meaning uh, the base was K and then it was to a power. So if we had uh, maybe K cubed minus K squared over K to the third, I would say the K squared doesn't matter. So you can, in polynomials, you're looking at the highest power. Exponentials always beat polynomials. So even if there was a uh, plus, oh man, 
even if there was a uh, plus k to the 50, the exponential term would win no matter what, even if that power is really big. So then it still works with those exponentials and just be two thirds because we got two thirds. Yeah, so with exponentials, you can basically throw away the polynomial part. Our next example. So before we actually get into it, do you think converge or diverge? Top is really big, so this will probably diverge because the top is exponential, the bottom is polynomial, and all exponentials beat polynomials. So this is probably a good uh, use for the nth term test for divergence. I bet if we took a limit, this would be going to infinity. But we're not in the nth term test section anymore, so let's go ahead and use the ratio test instead. All right, so this is a, probably a very divergent series, but we're going to prove it with the ratio test. So go ahead and find ak plus 1 times 1 over ak. The algebra should be a lot easier to reduce it down and take a limit. So simplify, and then when you're done simplifying, take that limit. It's a good time if you have any questions, I'll come around and answer them. And so you could multiply it out. So I'm skipping algebra steps using the Pascal's triangle and cubing.
Now we're about to apply a limit here. Oh, we'll do this real quick. So I don't care what the other stuff is because it's less powerful than K cubed. So we got two times one, which is two. I'm just taking the K coefficient of K cubed, which is 101. That's how I get the one right there. What are those last, uh, I don't even know if they're digits or letters. Uh, no, it's, right. just, uh, it's, it's, just it's, it's those terms I circled, but they're not important. The K cubed is what's important in the bottom. That's why I said plus stuff I don't care about, because it's not as powerful. Okay. That's based on the physicist method. Yes, okay. so I'm throwing away terms. Oh, what does two mean? Diverge. Diverge. Two is bigger than one, diverges.